adults this morning that have made a confession that they belong to Jesus? Can you wave? Can you shout? Can you wave? Can you signify to heaven? Can you let them know that I belong to you, God? It's a confession, no, it's not just a song. You are telling heaven that you belong to heaven. You belong to God. If you are proud of that family, you will let it know. I belong to you, God. I belong to you, God. You can put your name if you want. Allah, I want you belongs to you. I belong to you, God. I am yours and you are mine. So you are going to shout a very believing hallelujah. An hallelujah that came with double portion. So if you know you belong to God, if you know you are of God and God is of you, you are in Christ and Christ is in you, shout a thunderous hallelujah. Amen. You may please be seated. God bless you. And once again, please let me celebrate um, the choir, Spirit of David. Please put your hands together and celebrate them. Glory. Hallelujah. So quickly, as we proceed this morning, I have um, two questions I want to ask before we get into what we have for today. Um, I just need maybe like one or two person, maybe a guy and a lady. What do you want for Christmas? What do you want for Christmas? I see the auntie on pink. Please come, please come. Please let me celebrate her. Come, 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 come. Yes, I, I want a guy. I want a guy. Alex, yeah, Alex. Please let me put your hands together for them as they come forward. Please celebrate them. Let's, let's make that quick. What do you want for Christmas? But Bashar, don't worry, you are late. Alex, double up. What do you want for Christmas? Just tell the church. Some people are watching online. You don't know. They might just... All I want for Christmas is water. Is who? One Jesus. That's why they say I belong to you. Just one Jesus. All right, tell me your name and what you want for Christmas. My name is Demitop Oyejola. I need a laptop for Christmas. We need a laptop for Christmas. What kind of laptop do you want? A MacBook. A MacBook. Yeah. Which of the MacBook? Be precise, so. MacBook Pro. Pro. What year? Twenty twenty two. All right. You will get your Christmas gift. But I don't think it's from me. <laughs> but uh, say now, what do you want? Your name and what you All want. Right, for my Christmas? name is Alexander. Um, what I want for my Christmas gift is um, sponsorship for my master's degree in Canada. Sponsorship for your master's in Canada. Nice. Please let me put hands together for the two of them. Lovely. Um, so you'll be wondering now, why am I asking them what they want for Christmas? We have this habit in Nigeria, in the world, and when is our birthday, we get gifts. So now, everybody wants a gift for Christmas when it's not their birthday. So what do you want to give the celebrant that is Jesus? So what will you give Jesus that is the celebrant for Christmas? Who say, Jesus will like love. Like love. So what will you give Jesus for Christmas? That is why I want to bring up some panelists to come help us discuss what... Uh, what we should give Jesus, what is ideal to give Jesus for Christmas. And this is why we are doing this. That Joe used to share a testimony. He says um, he has a son in the Lord that traveled and came back and he came to him and he said, Daddy, I traveled though. I went to so, so, so country and I looked around. Because you have everything, I didn't even know what to buy for you. And Joe said, I looked at him and he said, it's because you don't want to buy anything. There's nothing that you buy that I won't take. So a lot of people will say, ah, Jesus owns heaven and earth now, so why should I give him anything? That means you don't want to give him before. So if you really want to give him something for his birthday, because it's the reason for the season, you would really, really be interested in today's service. So I believe you are seated and you are ready to learn. Don't just say, I don't want to give him. You will give him. So the first man I want to bring on the panelist is one man that I love, a teacher of the word, very amazing man. Please let me celebrate Pastor Bolaji Asifat. Please let me celebrate God in his life, Pastor Apology. Please, we can do that better. He's, he's, the student in the Sunday school class should clap better. Thank you, sir. And also to join him is my amazing sister, Dickiness Bukon Lami Oladunjoye. Please let me celebrate her.
And finally, to join them also, my wonderful brother, uh, the HOD for Team Jordan. Please let me celebrate Pastor Ebenezer Pison. Awesome. 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 And um, so you will now celebrate me as the anchor. <laughs> thank you. And um, thank you to everybody that is joining us online. So please, um, if you have questions and you're wondering what can you give Jesus for Christmas, wherever it is you're watching us from, I'm telling you that you are welcome. You can easily just go to our comment section. You can enter our DM and send us Whatever it is you want to ask, questions, suggestions, additions, and all of that. So, you're welcome. Um, thank you so much, my amazing panelists. Before we get to questions, before I start throwing questions at you, I want each and every one of us, I have three minutes each, to tell me what do you think, personally, we can give Jesus for Christmas? Knowing fully well that is the reason for the season. If there's no Jesus, there's no Christmas. So it's his birthday, the same way we all look forward to our birthday. I know some people here that when their birthday is coming, they make a wish list. They write over 30 things, 40 things. Money can come in four places with different account number. So what do you think we can give Jesus for Christmas? I'd love to start with Dickiness Bukonlami. What do you think we can give Jesus for Christmas? Uh, praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. What do I think we can give Jesus for Christmas? I can answer that in a, with just one statement, but um, this morning I would like, since I have three minutes, I'd like to um, dig a little, a little deeper. And, you know, when Pastor Femi messaged me that we were taking this session, uh, as a lot of people know, my first reaction would be, a, no. And then um, will be a, oh yes, how do we prepare? But I remember that I was, as I was praying and I was trying to prepare, um, the Holy Spirit ministered to me that, no, this is not, this is not the type of Sunday where you prepare a sermon. It is, it is um, a type of Sunday where you share your conviction. And so I came here this morning with a message for anyone, um, um, for anyone that is this morning. It's that uh, we all have a reason why we give something. Praise God. So beyond what we are giving, there is always a why we are giving it. And that's what makes what we are giving make sense. So when you ask me, what can I give Jesus? The first question I want you to answer in your heart is why am I giving Jesus? And we know that the reason why we do some things, you know, a lot of people get motivated by this. A lot of people get motivated by that. But in all of those, what is more grounding is to be motivated by love itself. And we know that love, Jesus is love and love is Christ. So when you ask in a simple form, what can I give Jesus? You can give Jesus, you know, stuff like winning soul by meeting the needs of people. Just like that scripture says that, you know, um, um, when I was, I was hungry, you fed me. When I was, you know, without clothes, you clothed me. And the disciple asks that, when did we do these things to you? And he says that, as much as you've done it to the least of you, you've done it to me. But um, this morning, I want us to dig a little deeper. More than giving Jesus, you know, this specific. It's just like giving someone, um, um, if you give me a phone now, I'll probably just put it somewhere because I have a phone that I'm using. If you probably give Pastor Shola a sneakers, it would just be a one-off. So for some, someone like Jesus that, look, that has everything, not just look like he has everything, the best thing to give him is an open check. Like you would give someone a gift card and I can enter into any store and pick what I really need. What I would, I would say I would give Jesus is to give him an open check. And that open check is my life. Because when I give, if the gift I'm giving Jesus is my life, then he can do what he needs. He can wield my life in, in a shape and a form that he needs per time and per season. And so Christmas, you know, we have a lot of people carrying a um, bag of rice to, you know, the less privileged. What if this time around, Jesus is not, he's just saying for you, I don't want you to even go to the less privileged. I want you to go to the privileged who have lost, you know, the sight of Christ and preach the gospel to them. 
So this morning, when, I, when, I, when you ask me, what can I give Jesus? I say, I say the best gift you can give Jesus is your life. And uh, whatever has your, at, as your attention, whatever has your attention, as your conviction, whatever has your conviction, as your confession, and your confession shapes your reality. And however you want, we read it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please, everybody, let's get her for taking this. Because uh, she said... Um, what um, on, on her own explanation, she said what she's going to give Jesus for Christmas is her life. She's going to give herself to God, you know, to, to tell, God is going to tell her what to do if she's giving God an open check, which is her life. Thank you so much. Um, I'll throw that to uh, Pastor Ebenezer, please, in um, three minutes. In three minutes. I know you're a man of many words, but three minutes, sir. All right, thank you for so much for this opportunity. It's actually a great one, and it's nice to be with us here today. Thank you so much. So talking about Christmas, first thing, ask yourself is, what is Christmas to you? Why are you celebrating Christmas? And another thing you need to ask yourself is that when you see the top, many of us have seen the flyer. If you've seen the flyer, let me see your hands up. Like you saw the flyer, you share, you posted it. So awesome, yeah, awesome, yeah. So. One thing you ask yourself is this. When we say, what will I give Jesus for this Christmas? So, during this period, we understand that the situation, the economy, you know, the challenges all around might be kind of somehow. And someone is coming to you again that you should give Jesus something. It might sound crazy that, what do I have to give Jesus? <laughs> like, a hey, whole Jesus, what do I have to give? And the other question is, is Jesus lacking? And for me to give him something. So I will announce to you right now that God or Jesus is not lacking anything. Jesus is not lacking. And so therefore, to everything you are giving unto him, it is a blessing unto you. And so therefore, let, me, let us go into the genesis of gifting Jesus. The first people that gave gifts unto Jesus. Let us see what they gave. And from that, you understand what it is that I should give as a gift. First all, to Jesus, or to God. Let's open the scripture. Matthew chapter 2. Let's open the scripture. Media, please. You know, it's a spiritual garden. Let's study scripture. Matthew 2. Matthew 2. Matthew chapter 2. Media, please. Help us with the screen here. Thank you. Verse 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, sorry, three wise men came from east to Jerusalem. Two, awesome, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Verse 11. Yeah, 2 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Yeah. And when they had opened their treasure, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and Mao. Now, understand this. There's more emphasis than a repeated word here. Worship. And the scripture justified. John chapter 4, verse 24. He said, to everyone that will worship God, must worship God in truth and in spirit. So, if you ask me, what will I give to God? I'll give God my worship. And to every worship that you are going to give unto God, it must be truth. And it must be spiritually based. And let me tell you something. There are ways that we give worship to God. Our service unto God is a worship unto God. Our service unto God is a worship unto God. So to you, I will ask you, what kind of service are you rendering to God that can serve as a worship unto God? Thank you very much. Please let me put this together for Pastor Ebenezer. Awesome. That was awesome. Awesome. Um, so, uh, Pastor Beniza said on his own note that um, he's going to give God for Christmas his worship. 
Pastor Bukola said, she's going to give God an open check, which is herself, her life, because whatever it is that has. So please, if you are taking notes, I'm repeating this so you won't miss anything, that whatever it is that has your heart, has your attention. All right, so Pastor Balaji, in three minutes, what will you give Jesus for Christmas? Before I ask my first question, please. Okay, thank you very much. I honestly want to appreciate the leadership of the church for this opportunity. Um, I think uh, what we should also look at is the, the circumstance that came with the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, in that story, there's a whole lot to pick. One of the things we should pick is humility. There was sacrifice. It's also love, fulfillment. There was a definition of why Jesus was going to come. And then we saw there that in that story, Jesus, that is God now, humbled himself and came in the person of a human, that is Jesus Christ. Why? The singular purpose is love. And then Jesus came that we may be saved. So there was an exchange. And the exchange there is Jesus for my people. So there was a giving. John chapter 3 and verse 16, for God so loved the world and he gave. So what that means is whatever it is we will be doing at this point in time, we should ask ourselves what is the purpose? Is it sacrificial? You know, down the lane, Matthew chapter 2, there were four things that were very important to me when I studied that. The three wise men, or no, the wise men, they were not three. The wise men, they gave their time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the scripture recorded that they journeyed down. They were in search, praise the Lord, of the Messiah. So part of the thing I will give, and I want to encourage the church to give this day, is your time. How do you want to give your time? You know, we have Let's Go and Fishing, a whole lot of activity. We'll be doing Carol tomorrow. There's a whole lot of stuff. Your time is very, very key. That's one thing we could give. Another thing they gave is they gave their talent. How do I mean? They had to study the star. So, and the scripture recorded that for you to be able to study the star, they were educated, they were learned. So, they were men that understood a trade. And as we are all seated here, there's one thing that God has given unto us, at least minimum of one. And I want to use the media for an example. They are doing a very fantastic job. So when they sit down to design a flyer, and then you see that it's very captivating. It's, some hard work has been put in, in, into use. That is their talent. You know, people want to sing here. They are singing carol song. It's, it's, it's talent. A another thing they gave was their treasury. So treasury in itself is not just the gift, but the motive. Gold, frankincense, and Maya. We really do not have time. We'll have taken a little bit of time to analyze what those things mean. So your treasury, as it were, is a channel to reaching the people. Don't over magnify the gift. What you want to give to them is Jesus, but it's a channel to giving that to them. And the last that they give was their testimony. The scripture recorded that when they saw Jesus, they bowed down, they worship him. So as we will be going out, we will be telling people about the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the true gospel. So succinctly, we are giving our time. We are giving our talent, our vocation, what you can do. We are giving our testimony. And then we are giving our gift to people. As unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Please let me celebrate Pastor Bolaji Asifa. Thank you so much. Pastor Bolaji analyzed the, the whole bit of Jesus. Give your talent. Give your time. And um, he mentioned something. He mentioned it like twice. We were talking about love. Um, even the birth of Jesus was because God loved us. John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And how do we show this love to God? Because um, 1 John 4, 1 John 4, 20 says, um, If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, whom he has not seen? So this is my question. How do you show love to God? Because when I was asking, what gift are, you, are we going to give Jesus for Christmas? Uh, Pastor Lilo said love. How do
do we show love to God? Because he's not here. Um, when Pastor Shia was singing, he was saying, if you love someone, you will be sure that that person has your mumu button. You do some things around them, you know, that to just show that you really, really love them. So how do we show love to God? What are the things that we'll do and will be recorded in heaven? That, okay, so this is, this is love. What are the sacrifices? What are the moves that we can make this Christmas? Because that will show that we are showing God love. How do we show love to God? Okay, pr praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to use an example of a, a marriage, a home. When a man gets married to a woman, you are saying goodbye to all form of other sisters or other ladies around you. You now have a clear direction. So to show love to God is shunning all other noise, all other form of distractions. To show love to God, as our pastor said here, is giving ourselves. There was an exchange. We shouldn't forget that. And that exchange is in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. It, God gave Jesus to us. So the best way of showing our love to God is giving ourselves completely. We can analyze that, overanalyze it if we have time. But what I'm saying is that the best way to show love to God is yourself, your true self, who you really are. You are a true divination of God, the image of God. When people see us, they should be able to see the love of Christ through us. And that is in our deed to people. You don't show love to people because they are positioned to get your love. You don't show love to people because of what you want to get from them. Jesus, when God came in the person of Jesus, it wasn't because God was going to get anything in return. It was a sacrifice. The only thing he demanded is simple. Just give me your life. I've died so that you can be saved. So the primary way of showing love to God is giving our true self to him. Nothing is attached. We are not saying, God, I'm doing this so that I can, I just want to give my whole self to you. Body, spirit, and soul. Thank you. Please let me celebrate Pastor Bola Uh um, I want to throw a question to Pastor Bukola. Um, you know, Pastor Bukola, you said when you were doing your remark, your opening remark, you said um, most times for Christmas, people take um, food to the less privileged, you know, to the motherless baby home, and all those things. So please, before I get to the question, please, people who parked outside the gate area should kindly go and repark in the compound. If you parked your car where the tent is, kindly move it into the compound or outside because the black gate right in front of us is going to be opened for access to go out because there's an event happening out there. So that you not just sit in your car and watch them finish the party at night before you go home. It might also be another way of showing love. Maybe as you are there, you tell them about Christ. Maybe that's why your car is parked there. So, Pastor Bukola, you were saying that um, um, another way to show love is to win souls. That's what you meant. Like it might not just be less privileged; it might be the privilege that that they've lost connection with Christ. Now, for this Christmas, what is your advice on how to win souls? How do you think? Because I know one of one of the biggest gifts you can give to God is winning souls. That is why we have light up. That is why we have Holy Ghost services. That's why we have convention. That's why there's congress. That's why there is altar call every time. Because it won't make sense after you stay in Nigeria, you grow up in this country, you live through this hardship, and you still go to hell. It won't be a very good idea. I don't know where I stay in any part of the world. It won't be nice if you go to hell too. But what do you think we can do this season to win souls? Because that's one of the best gifts that I think we can give to Christ. And you also mentioned, Pastor Bukola. Um, first of all, I want us to celebrate the leadership of this house for the consistent and the constant, you know, um, making sure that the true word is being, you know, um, um, listened to. And um, so when you touch on how can we win so see. Let's be very honest, there's a disconnect with uh, the youth and young adults when soul winning is concerned. At least growing up, I used to see soul winning as something we just do on that particular third Sunday that they say, okay, everybody, we are going out to win soul. And there's almost no um, em emotional, you know how you want to, you are talking to someone, but there's an emotional attachment. There's a depth of your conversation that will happen beyond someone that you just say, hello, I. So there's 
Because often it connects us when we are giving, uh, when we are uh, evangelizing. And that's one of the reasons I had stated earlier that the best gift you can give God is your life. Because then God can wield your heart. And so, so winning will not become a traditional thing. I was talking that somebody said, oh, yeah. In your offices, you can talk to um, your colleagues. You can sp um, preach in the um, uh, boss. You can, when God has, you know, taken over your art, so to say, he moves you to action whenever there is anyone veering out of Christ. And sometimes veering you to action might be speaking to them the word of truth. It might be speaking to them the word of knowledge. It might be, Showing love or sometimes it might be going down on your knees to pray for them. So what I'm saying in essence is that soul winning is a holistic activity that cannot be capped to just stepping out on Sunday and just preaching to people under the bridge. Yes, those people need Jesus, but that, those suited guys in your office that you are probably crushing on, they also need Jesus. And their asset to Jesus is your life. And so, when you are in that office, don't dim your lights because you are attracted to someone. You need, that's why you say, and I, and I love the particular scripture that I would like to, and that's Revelations 2. Okay. Um, that's Revelations 2, verse 4. He said, and, and if we read that Revelations 2 from verse 1, it spoke about lampstand and just all the glamorous um, expectations that we have at the end of our race. But in chapter 4, he said, but I have amplified version. He said, but I have this charge against you that you have left your first love. And in bracket, he said, you have lost the depth of love that you first had for me. It is the depth of love that will allow you speak to someone that you naturally will not speak to and speak to them about Christ. But I say that to say this, the best way to evangelize soul is to Speak the word of God with conviction and with power. To comfort others with the comfort you've had. See, there's a way that you will preach gospel to someone and will carry so much depth. And someone that just probably read someone's testimony is sharing someone's testimony. See, they said it's different from I went. Praise God. And that's why I love the statement Pastor Shire made. Um, and I'm going to quote him so that I don't miss the essence of it. He said, when you know what you carry, you know when you can, what you can face. See, a lot of us in church, we veer from the content God is creating for us to win. So, see, God, some challenges we, we face in life is God creating content for evangelism. Because we comfort others with the comforts you have. But what if the content that God is trying to create in your life makes you veer away from God? What, is, what then will be your testimony? And the, and the depth of your message. So in essence, um, um, the totality of what I'm saying is that the best way to win, so again, and I repeat, you know, the first time I said, I said the best gift you can give Jesus is, is your life. The best way you can win, so is total surrender to God that he can wield in time and in season, however version he wants to speak to someone. I am a person of word, and if you will preach the gospel to me, I need to I need to um, smell the depth of your message before you can veer me. Because I probably have four lines of argument to tackle any of your points. And to someone, it might just be that, you know, touchy feeling of being there, being um, a constant help in time of their need. So I am saying again and again, the best way to win so is to win so with power, with the content of our message, with our conviction, and most importantly, with our surrender, so that God can wield our heart to be able to speak that message however it's needed to be speak in that season. Praise God. Please let me celebrate God in life of Pastor Bukor. Love me a lot. Enjoy it. Thank you, Ma. God bless you. What you said, uh, that the challenges we face is just another way where we can just preach the gospel. Uh, reminded me of one of that Jewish testimony that he said, I think he got on a plane or he was going somewhere and there was no seat and he stood up for an elderly person to sit and the person came back to him and said, you must be a pastor. He didn't see anything just because he stood up like, you must be a pastor. And it's that easy and that is why I tell people that um, if you give your life to God as Pastor Bukala said, it will be easy because winning souls has now gone beyond doing morning cry around past five. 
Because that's what a lot of people know as winning souls. You come to my window, you shout, Jesus is coming, son. <laughs> <laughs> winning souls has gone beyond that. So, um, and the Pastor Bukola said, the best way to win souls, aside giving Jesus your life as a gift, if you give him your heart also, is going to stay part-time, tell you what to do, who to meet and what to say to that person. Because the same message you're going to share for a 10-year-old is different from what you're going to tell a 20-year-old, a 35-year-old. So this is to Pastor Ebenezer. In your own word, what are the ways to win souls? Because I know that is where, that is where you, that is your major. Let me say that's your major. You are, you are in the evangelism department because you will know that well. So what are the ways to win souls? Because a lot of people here, I can say it for free that 80% of people seated in here are very shy to stand up in the bus and preach the gospel. It's not because they don't want to. But you know, you know when they go up and say, uh, praise the Lord, and somebody say, oh, that I they feel like, ah, no, 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 this is the wrong time. So what are the ways? Because that's what a lot of people know. That's what some of us got to know. If you enter Tata from K2 to Oshodi, if they don't preach the gospel, they will say drug. One of those two will happen. So what are the ways, aside the conventional ways that we know, aside the morning cry, you know, um, going around, sharing tracts, because right now, you just give tracts to people, they won't read it. They'll just put it in their pockets and just move on. They'll just collect it from you, so you stop following them. So what are the ways that are practical for the youth, for the young adults, for the teenagers, because Pastor Bukola said that in recent time, we've lost touch. As young people, we've lost touch when it comes to evangelizing. So what are the ways that you feel is attractable? Because I'm going to do what I love. I'm going to do what is very easy for me to do. For me now is to talk. I can sweet talk you to like Jesus. After I told Pastor Bolaji that I love this his shirt. Because the logo on his shirt is um, catch up with Jesus. And that thing itself is is the brand on ketchup. So if you see, the first thing you think is, ah, it's ketchup. Then you see, ah, ketchup with Jesus. Oh, nice, nice idea. You want to read about what is there. So what are the ways you feel that are very catchy and very interesting to win people to Christ? Pastor Ebenezer, awesome. All right, thank you very much. Uh, this is a practical question and something I want to relate to every one of us so that it won't be like we are talking to ourselves. I want you to, I want you to tell someone beside you, congratulations. Tell someone beside you, be practical, congratulations. congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. The reason why I'm asking you to tell your neighbor congratulations is this. <laughs> it's because there is a reason for this season. And the reason why there is a reason for this season, and I will show you. Because everything happen, that is happening right now, God is Let's turn to the scripture, Acts 10, 38. Let me show you something. Let's show you something. Acts 10, 38. Media, thank you. Everyone on the screen, thank you. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Now, whatsoever your name is, my name is Ebenezer. Put your name to this. How God anointed Ebenezer of Ogun State with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Now, I'll ask you a question and it's a question that you answer to yourself. It's a rhetorical question. What good do you represent? If you understand the good that you represent, it's easy for you to preach the gospel. It's easy for you to represent Christ at any level, any position, any angle you find yourself. Do you even represent any good at all in the society? Because today, the gospel is not just about the teaching. It's not just about doing town cry because it's boring already. No one wants to listen to that. You know, if you are talking too much, what do you want to say? You need a message. And that message will come from your good deed. 
Scripture says in Acts chapter 12, the first time the disciples were being called Christian in Hancho, Scripture says that they saw their character, their lifestyle, they represent a good, a big. What good do you represent in your office? Are you the type in your office that doesn't even greet anybody? Because you are using iPhone 13. You are using the latest iPhone. And you, are, you, don't, you can't even have the confidence to invite those people to your car room. You can't. Because even then, you are the type that when you, are, <laughs> when you are snapping your selfie, you are selfish about your selfie. Because you don't, bring, you don't evolve, you don't carry everyone along with whatsoever you are doing. <laughs> so, it's important that we define it from here. Let's talk to ourselves. Evangelism will be easy if every one of us represent a good in every area that we stand, in every office that we hold, in our organization, in every location that we find ourselves. Are you a fashion designer that doesn't... When I give you my clothes, the next time I'm seeing my clothes is three months later. I won't get it the day I want to wear it. You can't have the confidence to invite that your client to come to the, the church about, you know, because you're not preaching, you're not preaching excellence. Your work attitude is not preaching excellence. And so therefore, and these are easy way to preach. Because you can imagine a client that you actually did a very good and perfect job for. And you're having a carol like this in church. It won't be hard for you to invite such a person to church. Because you've done a good and wonderful job. It will be easy. Even your boss. You have your boss in the office that you respect so much. And you have good conduct to him. It will be easy for you to present whatsoever you want to present to him. Because you are of good conduct. And that is why I speak to you again. What good do you represent? Are you a caterer that when we eat your cake? Okay, man. Praise the Lord. Uh, please let me celebrate Pastor Ebenezer. I think he just came out here to just drag people. I don't know, uh, Pastor. This one, Pastor Lilo, this one I say you don't know. You don't know. Is this cloth with you? <laughs> no, but really, you have to. Um, just to butcher what he said, an excellent spirit must be found in you. That is why Daniel was made head of every other person. Because an excellent spirit was found in him. Was in him. Because really, from what he said, I can, I can attest to it. My tailor cannot invite me for anything in the church. <laughs> There's no way I will attend. Because if I give him clothes, I have to beg him. Call people around him to beg him. Then he makes me lie. How many people do that thing? You need your clothes next week. You tell them it's this week. And hopefully it's still that next week that they'll deliver. Then it's right in time. So please, um, whatever it is, wherever it is you find yourself, another way to preach the gospel is our lives. To, to win souls. Because it will be easy when you are doing good and people want to serve that God that is making you do good. Mm -hmm. Not when you do something and say, ah, and I'm a Christian. No. Have you done something to someone and the first thing they tell you is that you, you are a Christian? It's an identity. It's not just a song that SOD sang this morning. It's a confession. It was a confession. You belong to God. So if you belong to a family, you should act like you are in that family. You can't go out and do things that are not being done in that family. They will deny you freely and easily. So Pastor Bolaji, before I throw this open to the house, before I take questions from people, because I know somebody's already planning the Bible that they will buy and come and drop on the altar as Christmas gift. I want to give Jesus. They will now go and buy. It might not even be a big Bible. You know those small blue uh, sword uh, pocket Gideon size? Bible. Gideon Bible. Testament. That are just New Testament. They will say, no, no, no. I'm a new creation. If you bring that Bible here. Yeah. So, Pastor Bolaji, to you, what are the ways of, from your own point of view, what are the ways you think we can win souls, we can evangelize? Because that is the whole reason why Christ died. That is why we are celebrating Christmas. That is why, because they had to give birth to him for him to die. That's why we have Easter. If there's no Christmas, it can't be Easter. If he didn't come to die for us, if he didn't come at all, he won't even die for us. So how do we, we can't pay him back, but how do we just make sure that because we are saved, how do we share this good news? 
Thank you very much, sir. Um, our two pastors here have said a whole lot, and I really want to give credence to them. Um, uh, Pastor Missy said, um, your understanding, yes. Uh, and the truth is that what you don't have, you can't give. So as children of God, we should give ourselves to studying. It's important. Um, John 3.16 is very popular, but we should take it beyond that. Because the time will come when you need to speak those words. So we just need to take our time to study. And then, of course, our lifestyle. This is very deep. But I'm going to encapsulate that by saying, let's position ourselves to be someone of value. You see, value attracts value. When people see that, you know, you, 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 everything about you, there's a whole lot of benefits. You see, when you see the person of Jesus, is a suit. There's a whole lot. There is joy. There is peace. There is comfort. There is salvation. There is a whole lot with Jesus. And when, if we represent Jesus, they should see that in us. An excellent spirit. Are you in a place where there are problems and then they are looking for people to solve it? Even if you don't have the solution, say you want to provide one. Hallelujah. And then you are providing one and then you are magnifying Jesus. You saw the testimony of that uh, sister at camp. The pregnant woman died. The woman said, Jesus, don't shame me this time around. So she was not ashamed of the gospel. So we should be, yeah, a person of value, which is very important. And number three, to evangelize for Jesus, we should live a sinless life. See, that is very, very important. When devil knows that this is what you're about to do, he tries to put a whole lot of temptation around you. But if you can be pure for the Lord, Hallelujah. People will look at you and they see a replicate of Christ Jesus. You can't say you want to evangelize, you don't have money. You can't say you want to evangelize, you are not looking Jesus. Even in your household where you stay, you know, simple that is as something that's as, as simple as there's a pumping machine, they will always leave it. Nobody will go and switch it off. Start, let them know you for something. And then any day you want to talk to them and say, ah, this person is responsible, is someone of value. So let's position ourselves to be someone of value. And also, let's pray. We can pray. Even if you are timid, you don't know how to speak to people, you can come to church and say, Pastor Ejo, how many persons have given their life? Just give me their name, sir. You get their name in your closet, keep praying for them. You're already doing something. Open up your house for house. There's a whole lot that we can do to evangelize Christ. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Please help me celebrate yeah. every of my panelists. We celebrate them. We can do that plus better now. Uh, are you oh yeah? Hey. Be celebrate yourself if they won't have me and what's all there. All right, so moving on, we would um, take questions, and um, I believe Pastor Femi would um, help me with that. But please, uh, Pastor Bolaji said we should first of all study the word because the Bible says study to show yourself approved. Etika, it's okay. No, wait, don't say it. See, look at the people they are saying that they should study. See how they are looking at me like, you want to be there. So you need to study the word. Secondly, you need to be a person of value. What's that thing, sir? Live a sinless life. A person of value. Pastor, Pastor JT shared during the prayer conference that um, there was a time that they were trying to fix a gate in his estate. And while they were in that particular meeting, somebody just stood up and said, I think Pastor JT has traveled. And another person asked why. He said, because if he's here, he won't be having this meeting. He would have fixed it. He would just tell us that, I'll fix the gate to maybe if you people care for refund or not. So be a person of value. Let them know you for something. So that when you don't come to church, when we don't see you around, when you don't do that thing that you do all the time, people can say, ah, Pastor Bolaji is not here. He's not taking his Sunday school class. We'd not see him talking to first timers outside too. So please don't just come to church and take picture by the bridge <laughs> and go back home. <laughs> Another way of evangelizing is taking picture and posting it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yes. So quickly we'll take we'll take questions. If you have questions, can I please see your hand? Questions. If they've said something here that you don't understand, I want to believe we all get it. But if you have a question as regards what I've been discussed, if you are wondering what you should give Jesus for Christmas, you can ask. Because they, we all know Jesus very well. Maybe there's a particular chocolate you are planning on buying. 
questioned. Pastor Femi. Can I say questions? Yeah, yeah. As we are waiting for questions, Pastor Bokola, can you quickly yeah. touch on? So uh, while we are waiting for the question, um, I think I just really felt in my heart that we need to also touch on the creatives. That is those people that have, you know, um, influence on social media, people that have creative way of just, you know, maybe making videos, may making skits. Those are also ways, especially because we live in a, in a, in a, in a, in a time where this is where, you know, people consume information from. We all agree that an average young person spends more time on their phone more than they spend in front of a print, like a book. So another way we can also evangelize is through our social media, your status. I remember when, we, when I was in University of Lagos, we used to do, we used to do, um, we used to do something in University of Lagos. We called it Jesus in Jeans. So that day we wear jeans, we carry full stuff that we have, and we're broke students. We carry all our broke full stuff. <laughs> And then we'll go knocking on people's door. We'll just sit with you. We'll not, just, we'll not tell you at first that we come to evangelize. We'll just say we came with food and want to juice with you. Sometimes we even take um, corridor packs, spaghetti that can be eaten, and we'll sit with you. And you, you know what's funny? When we came to the bridge, there was a lady I met in one of those rooms. I can't, I can't ever forget this. Fagua room. And that we spoke, one of the people that we want to Christ. Guess what? When we came to the bridge, she was one of those people that came to the church, and she's a member of, you know, um, welfare department. So another way we can do that, we can be creative. It is borderless. We can use our social media, we can use our statuses, and we can use, you know, our creative minds. And I pray that God will breathe on all those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, in absence of questions, I believe we have... Um, um, contributions and um, Pastor is going to help me with our contribution. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, I want to bless God for this topic we are speaking on, and my prayer is that it will be expounded in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So, in the book of Matthew, chapter one, um, we were told of the account of how Mary conceived Jesus, and we were told that um, she was um, to get married to Joseph. <coughs> But when Joseph found out that she was pregnant, we were told he wanted to, you know, um, call off the wedding. But it was supposed to be a private thing. He didn't want to do it publicly. You know, he didn't want to give her a public disgrace. So um, eventually, the Holy Spirit ministered to him that she was pregnant with a child and his name is going to be Jesus and all of that. And we all know how the story ended. So this is what I'm trying to say that, you know, um, for the Bible to have said that he didn't want to make it a public disgrace, but he planned on doing it, you know, privately, quietly. Um, this is just um, a practical analogy for us to see that even Jesus Christ, at that point, he will have faced disgrace, he will have faced shame. Because it's just like a lady coming to the house and telling her father I'm pregnant. The first question they ask you is, who is the father of the child? So there's no disgrace that, in fact, there's no abuse that is as painful as that abuse. Somebody calling you a bastard or calling you an illegitimate child and things like that. So that would have been the number one disgrace that Jesus would have experienced. And the Lord came through for him. So it, it would have been like a time of rejection for Mary also, who was carrying Jesus Christ. So the love of God spread across, and at that point, the, the situation was arrested. Mary was not disgraced. You know, and um, Jesus too was not disgraced. So I'm just trying to say this because there are people who might not be suffering a public disgrace. There are people who might not be suffering um, a, a kind of predicament that is known to everybody. He planned to put her away privately. That means it was supposed to be a private affair. Some people might be going through some things that are private, but those things are killing them. Rejection, shame, difficulties. I'm just saying this this morning that just like the way the love of Christ was shared across and the situation was arrested and today we have salvation, we have Jesus Christ who is the reason for the season. Be the reason why somebody can smile. Just that simple. Be the reason why somebody can smile. A smile might be simple but it is a lot. Be the reason why somebody has hope to live for tomorrow. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So it might not be so big, it might not be, might be so little, might be so big, but please, this season, be the reason behind somebody's smile. Either they post it on WhatsApp status or not. Because that's what some people do at the end of the year. The reason behind my smile. And I did not see my picture. If you message me next year, Pastor Tulu, to you, sir. Yeah, um, I, I thank God for all of the responses so far. Very beautiful, very apt. Um, in addition, it's mine is a plea. Uh, the Bible says that to thy own self be true. Uh, you cannot give what you don't have. So if there are still pending issues that you know that um, would hold back from you being an or a constant giver to Jesus. Because one thing, one major thing you can give to Jesus that he doesn't joke with is souls. His souls. So if you are still wrestling or living in sin, yeah, or you are still struggling with the study of the word of God and prayers, it is going to be difficult to be able to please God. It is going to be difficult. From prayers, we get power. Yeah. So that is when you pray well and you pray very well. Yeah, anytime you get to talk, yeah, or anywhere you are, power is coming with your words. They're not just mere words. And that is why they're just says they're just putting it as very simple. Very simple. There's no vibe or somewhat charisma per se, but it's very powerful. Very powerful. And then the story of the word of God, it gives us wisdom. So that when you speak, not only is it going to be powerful, but it's going to be great wisdom. And so you would, by the Spirit of God, and by giving yourself to study, as Pastor Boji already said, you would, you would answer questions that are seemingly unanswerable in the hearts of people. And that way, evangelism will be much more effective because there are always opportunities. And every opportunity that will come would count. That's my contribution. Thank you. And to help us close on the contribution, Pastor Femi. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I just want us to be very practical this season. I've heard a lot of reasons why you can't get out to speak to somebody in the bus. I've been there. I've been there. Uh, there was a time the uh, Holy Spirit nudged me to speak in the public bus very long time ago. And while I was still struggling to say, how can I speak? How can I do this? Somebody has started talking. And then I was praying for the person that God, whatever he's saying, people should believe. But I've missed that opportunity. Can we be practical this season? You are in the same house. Don't go, don't go too fast. Start from home. Start from home. He was talking about, uh, is it pumping machine or whatever it is? You have generator. Others are the one pumping the water. They've never used your gen. And you want to call them together. And you want to share love of Christ. I was a guy in my hostel in, um, in the university at that time. You can't touch his bucket, Philip. Pastor Philip. You can't touch his bucket. Everything is named. He used to call him one funny name. I don't want to mention it. Anytime I didn't praise or shoot, he would say, one day, what the, the guy said, keep quiet. He don't understand the love of God. Because Jesus said it in the book of Matthew. Clearly to us. He said, when I was hungry, you, you, you did not give me food. And the guy was saying that, ah, if I have seen you, I would have given you. But he said, you have not done it to these people. How can we be practical this season? Go back home. Be very practical. And I'm not teaching you what I've not done. If you get, if you get into my closet now, it's super clean. Take six months before now. Anything you have not used six months ago, you can do without it. Whether it's your best bet and whatever is your best, whatever. You know, there are some things that you can't let go. It's so precious to you. That's how you know how to give well. Go into your closet. As you leave church today, maybe you know that Sunday sleep is okay, we can sleep. Once you are done with your sleep, get into your closet. Check everything you have not touched in the last six months. You can do without it. Start packing them out. A thing can make a can. It can change everything. Everything. I was saying I don't have enough, uh, what do you call, footwears. And I, while I was packing out, I packed more than eight pairs. 
out. They have not touched in the last six months. And there are people who are wearing same thing. I've noticed some people in church. They've been wearing same, same particular shoe. And you want dress a lot. Sisters, am I speaking to you? Yes, you have different colors with combination. Go back and check them. They pack them out. You don't know who to give. You have an excuse that it's not their size. Bring it to church next week, Sunday. I will take it from you. And can I tell you something? What you give in your pain is a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. When you let go, if you, I'm not talking about bringing 100,000 when you have 1 million. When you bring that 10 naira out of the 100 naira, or you say, this 100 naira is remaining, I'm giving it out. Pastor Books was sharing the testimony with me. She squeezed something into my pocket. That currency, she said she has been receiving it a lot. She said, Pastor, what will I do with the remaining one? I said, it's just the beginning. Make sure that you are not the type this season that is key for somebody that is going to give you something. Change your mentality. Turn it around. Don't expect anything from anyone. Be the one that wants to give everything out. Lastly, before we came for Congress, my fa former pastor, he has a Benz and um, what do you call this other car? Mozu. Uh, whatever. God told them to go and to go and sell the Benz. Ah. The boy was like, ah, he will use the small one. Let's give the small one out. This Benz that we want to use. But they obeyed. Gave the car out. And when we were in Congress, I mean, Congress was going on and all that. He said on Monday, somebody sent him a video of a car in the U.S., the guy, I, he sent me the video. Lexus 460 2018 model, limited. Send him a video. The guy said in the video that I bought this, I packed it in the house. God has ministered to me to ship it to your house and all that. On Monday, and the guy was saying, eh, well, before I thought that it's going to take a long time to ship it and whatever, but I just wanted to know that it somehow is on the sea, it's coming. And the man was like, did I ask that I want to buy a car or something? <laughs> that he's not planning to buy any car. And the next call they got on Friday, this Friday, somebody snapped a picture. The car was in front of their house, parked in front of their house. And the man said that uh, it was already on the way. He just wanted them to know so that they are not um, they are being confused on what is going on. That God has laid it in his heart since November 14. That instead of selling this one, he's taking this one to them. That God said they have a need for it. They left camp yesterday. The woman could not believe. Could not believe. This God that we serve is just an amazing God. What if they held back? They won't know. That miracle will happen. God will transfer that into somebody else. They won't know. They will still be with their best. But that blessing wouldn't have come to them. But thank God for the spirit to yield. This season, let the people see. The Jesus people are looking for. I am the one. He looks exactly like me. He talks exactly like me. I have enough to give. Let that be your posture this season. Stop in the office. Say the truth so that they know that you are the Jesus in that place. It didn't take so long for people to know that I'm a pastor in my workplace. I spent just one month. People already know my identity. It's even easier for people to know where you belong rather than bringing rubbish to you. Take a stand for Jesus. Not just your resources. Take a stand. You just be the one that wants to let people know that Jesus still exists in this country. I watched a video that somebody put up in our group. Forty-eight million. Now sixty thousand dollars in a right ply loan. A man who was sick left the sick bed, brought the money. The driver that the money was uh, left in that car. He brought it in this age, in this time. How many of us will see sixty thousand dollars and bring it back? There is no contact. There is no way to contact the man. He had to bring it to a radio station, this barricade in Abuja, so that they can announce to find the owner because there are specific other denominations. They said they are going to use that one to track the person. If the person can get it correctly, he should come and collect the money. Ah, Omani, Osi number, Osi anything, get so tight, and then move on with the ready one. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. God Amen. bless you. Please, once again, help me celebrate all my panelists. Thank you so much. So very much. Please let me celebrate God in their life. Pastor Ebenezer, Pastor Bolaji, and Dickiness Bukola, me allowed to Please, I believe that applause can be louder and it can be better. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So from what we've learned today, quickly, we have... Um
All right, so quickly, from everything Pastor Femi said, don't just look out to, to who is going to give you, who is going to get you a Christmas gift. Be the Father Christmas to someone. Be the Santa Claus to someone. And I believe as we do that this season, as we go around showing love, blessing people, God is going to bless us mightily than we plan in Jesus' name. And I believe that that amen is on one portion. It's not on double portion. No, no, no. That amen is not an amen that has a double portion. You know double. God bless you.